Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Stamp It Up with Jamie. Thank you for so much for joining me tonight. If you're catching this on replay um, on uh, any of the platforms, thank you so much for watching. This is my Wednesday night Facebook Live tutorial. And I'm just finishing up getting ready here. We're going to dive in. Let me bring up comments on my computer here so I can follow along. I hope everyone's having a good night uh, tonight. Uh, let's see here. Okay, good. Hi, Roz. Good evening. Hi, Amy. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining me. Am I crooked? I'm a little crooked. There we go. Okay. Um, so a couple of weeks back, I did this card here. It was on my blog. I think it was like, I don't know, mid-February maybe, maybe even beginning of February. And um, people really liked it. I think it's a really sweet design. And so for tonight, I decided to kind of get my inspiration from this card, kind of switch things up a little bit, and I'm going to be making this one. And even tonight, I'm going to change it up a little bit um, because there are some things that I decided afterwards that I wanted to change. And uh, you can let me know if you like it or not. Um, so I just realized something. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Um, so this is my card here, and it uses the Under My Umbrella uh, bundle, actually. But this is the stamp set here. It makes a couple of different kinds of umbrellas, really cute flowers. I think the flowers are my favorite part of this stamp set, and the great sentiments. And it coordinates with uh, Umbrella Punch, which looks, sorry, you're getting all my reflections. <laughs> um, something like that. It's got the folded umbrella as well as the open umbrella, and then the handle there. So we're going to be using everything and a ton, ton, ton of images. I have one, two, three, four, I have eight images on blocks right now. So um, lots to do. So let's just uh, dive in. My uh, card base here is the Balmy Blue and it's the four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half in the middle. Okay, and uh, next what I'm going to need is, um, you're gonna see it looks a little different, a panel of cardstock. This here is uh, three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Oh, that's okay, Heather, no worries. Hope to catch you on replay maybe. Um, so one of the things I, I was comparing my cards and what I really liked about this card is that the blue pops through a lot more. Um, and it's kind of like this nice balance between the red and the blue. And <laughs> no yellow. Yes, exactly, Karen. I can't do three weeks in a row. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, and so for this one, I decided to kind of chop off the bottom here and let the blue behind it show through just a bit more. Thanks, Teresa. I really appreciate it. Hello. Um, so I'm taking a gingham pattern of balmy blue here. This is part of the Subtles Designer Series paper, the 6x6. Six six. I just love these packs of paper. I use them so much. And this is the exact size of the card front. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to adhere that right over uh, my card front. It's going to cover the complete front here. Like so. I love that gingham pattern. Um, I almost wish that they would just sell that pattern because I use it so much for all my colors. Okay, so next what you're going to want to do is take a regular copy paper, like computer paper, and cut out a circle using the layering circles dies. And this circle here measures three by three, so it's the three by three circle, and just cut it out of the computer paper. Um, and the reason why when we are kind of stamping an image around, I don't know, can you tell, maybe you couldn't tell, but it it's not um, stamped all the way through. Although I guess we could have because I ended up covering it. But um, the reason why I use a computer paper is it's thinner, so we don't get like a little lip. So anytime you're doing, um, what's that technique called? Whatever that technique is called, masking. Whenever you're doing a masking technique, you always wanna use computer paper because it'll be more flush to your image and not leave um, like a shadow line around it. So I just took a little piece of washi tape and adhered that circle down. And then I'm gonna be using all four of the flower images. So there's two larger ones and two smaller ones. And I'm going to stamp them in my Memento Black ink here. Let me just get them all out here ready. One, two, where's the other one? Three and four. 
Okay, and I'm gonna really just make my way around, um, around my circle here. And I've done this twice now, and oddly enough, it all ends up fitting. I don't know how, but it's like they're meant to be. And um, I do snug them one right up to the other. So um, there's lots of images and you can even go off so that one went off my cardstock Oop, I should have gone a little closer <laughs> um, and some of these images the flower images are already kind of arced so they kind of work really oops I smeared that one they work really well with going around a circle it's like it was meant to be and every time I stamp I'm kind of moving my flowers in different positions so I'm not always getting the same stamped image in the same spot every time. I want a small one for the end there. Like this guy, I'm actually gonna stamp him technically kind of upside down. Now we'll come with this one all the way around. Okay, and it's masking. So when I pull this up, that's what you see. And I'm gonna keep working my way around. Again, kind of moving, rotating the different images. These flowers are so fun. I love this because these flowers really could stand alone um, on their own with a card. You don't have to make them work with the umbrella. And I had this image a while ago um, of doing something like this. So I was so happy. I was like, what should I do? What should I do tonight? And then I was like, I'm actually going to just kind of replicate what I already did and be inspired by it. Okay, so now I'm getting to the edge. So I kind of want to be like choosy what I want to put there. I think I'm gonna put one of the big ones, kind of like on a side. So it's okay if they overlap a little. Okay, perfect. So we are done with that. Now, while I have my ink open, I am going to um, go ahead and just stamp some other things that I need to stamp as well. So I'm gonna stamp the open umbrella in the memento black ink and I'm also going to stamp uh, where are they the boots in memento black ink might as well get all my stamping out of the way while I have it open hold on that didn't stamp very well let's try that again nice crisp there we go and my handle of my umbrella now this is where so when I open this up, I have to figure the umbrella goes in like this. So I'm going to stamp it like that. I always like to kind of figure out which way it has to go in. Not that it, not that I do it perfectly by no means. There's been plenty of times when I'm like trimming the paper in order to get it through a punch. Um, okay, I'm going to set this aside, but I figured I might as well have gone through all of that. So now what I'm going to do is take... Uh, Poppy Parades Light and Dark Stampin' Blends, Petal Pink Light and Dark Stampin' Blends, and Granny Apple Green Stampin' Blends. Now, uh, I highly recommend leaving this paper on, or not, or, or like putting it aside maybe, because as I was coloring, you kind of forget which are which flowers, and like what's a leaf, especially like in here where they're kind of cut off, you're like, is that a leaf or is that a flower? It doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, but it is kind of helpful to keep them on there so that you have some kind of guide. So um, though any flower that had a center to it, like this one does, can you see? Um, it's hard because my camera is over here. So when I color, it's like I, I block the camera because I'm right-handed. Um, so anything with a circle, any flower with a circle, I colored Poppy Parade. And I did like maybe half of them and then went back with my dark poppy parade and just added a, a couple of low lights. And then I came back. Um, I'm mostly going to use the brush end of my markers. Okay, so anything with a uh, center to it, I colored poppy parade. And then all these other ones that don't have a center to them. Are gonna get colored petal pink so like this guy here him where him down here again starting with the light shade coming back in with the dark just to add a little uh, 
low light to it. And I especially like um, the dark petal pink because the light one is so, so light. It's like super light colored. And then for the leaves, I use the pointed end of the gran light granny apple green. I colored them. Oh goodness, my kids are upstairs. <laughs> I can hear them. Um, color the leaves. I literally just put one la la layer of color and then came back in with the pointed um, fine tip of the dark and just along that vein, just added kind of like a line. Now, I'm gonna do a little card magic for you because I figured you didn't want to watch me color this whole thing, but I literally just went all the way across, okay? And I ended up with something like this. Ta-da, card magic. <laughs> I really figured um, we would speed things up a little bit so you didn't have to sit and watch me do the whole thing. Okay, so um, let's see here. What do I want to do next? This is our card. Let me show you the card. Um, okay, so the other thing I was going to switch up is I wanted to mat this on um, matted. So in my example here, I didn't mat. I love a good matting, so I figured we'd mat in the Poppy Parade. Uh, so my Poppy Parade is, it should be three, yep, three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. Oops. Like doesn't want to roll tonight. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to mat that on my, again, one eighth bigger. So just three and seven eighths poppy parade cardstock. Now, the center is um, a separate piece of Whisper White. You could do uh, like a reverse masking technique. I did it, oh uh, gosh, a while ago. So if you're watching this on YouTube, Go back and you'll see um, that technique. I actually did it with the Under My Umbrella stamp set. And you could stamp right on this direct uh, piece of cardstock. But for the sake of keeping things simple, I stamped it on a separate piece. Um, so I used that same size, that three inch uh, die, the circle die. And this is cut out of our Whisper White. And um, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. In my example, I covered the whole thing with the raindrops. I think tonight I'm just going to do a couple. I'm not going to completely cover the whole thing. And just be mindful when you're doing your, your raindrops, which way you're holding the drops. Because I think they're supposed to go like that. But I've, I've seen people do it like that as well. I think it's supposed to be like a teardrop, right? <laughs> so um, let's see here. Now this, what's fun about these raindrops is they have a very fun shape to them. So you can actually kind of... Um, like interconnect them. They're not round, they're not square. They really are supposed to kind of, um, ah, I have a bubble, um, kind of fit together. So I don't think, I'm gonna stop there. I can always add more, but I'm gonna go with less raindrops <laughs> than this guy. This guy, I definitely went like crazy with the raindrops. Let's just stop there. I can always add more, I figure, right? Okay, so let's get back to our uh, umbrella. The umbrella itself, I'm gonna color with that Poppy Parade. Definitely gonna use that brush end of the marker and cover the whole thing. This one I didn't do uh, card magic with. You're gonna actually have to watch me color the whole thing. Um, color it in. What's nice about these blends, unlike um, like the Stampin' Right markers, is that the ink blends beautifully together so you don't get the lines it just looks like like brush strokes almost no not even brush strokes it just no strokes <laughs> it's just all smooth it looks like it was a stamped image okay so this is the light poppy parade then i'm going to take the dark one again the brush and just because i'm covering a lot of space here it's just easier Although I am going kind of thin with the line. Whoops, I just colored outside the line a little bit there. <laughs> That's okay. And then I'm going to kind of go here. Anywhere I think that there would be sort of a dark line, a dark shadow, that's where I'm going to be putting this color. Like this. Now, they do blend, but you can definitely see lines there. So in order to make that blend even more, I'm going to come back with the light, the Poppy Parade light, and just kind of bring that color out and it also the more you layer your markers your coloring the darker it gets 
So you may only, there may only be like a dark and a light, but the variations of color that you can get just by building upon building the color is endless, really. Hi, Marty from Virginia. Thank you for joining me tonight. Okay, so there's our umbrella. And I did color the boots in petal pink. I don't know. In my inspiration, I did color them in Poppy Parade, and I'm kind of like leaning that way tonight. What do you think? I feel like I want to color them in Poppy Parade as well. Actually, you know what? I have two boots. Let me color one in Poppy Parade, and if we don't like it, I'll do it in the petal pink. So the same goes for my boots. I'm going to start with the light Poppy Parade. Oh my goodness, I totally just colored outside the lines there. Okay, hold on, we're gonna have to start on this one. <laughs> Apparently I can't color and talk at the same time. I should have had card magic for these as well. <laughs> so the first time I put the color down, I'm literally just trying to kind of color it in, fill it with ink, with the color. And then from then is when I add the dimension. And these are, these blends are so uh, user friendly. I'm not a huge coloring fan. I find it a little overwhelming, but I feel like these are, are pretty easy. How about Bobby Blue Boots to pick up? Oh, that's fun. I didn't think about that. Bobby Blue Boots, huh? I totally didn't think of that. Well, I might be committed at this point, Roz. <laughs> you may have to, we may have to try it again and make a third card that time <laughs> that one with the balmy blue boots it's funny red and blue aren't colors I would naturally put together but when I do I think I think they complement each other nicely okay so hello mom okay so we're gonna take our punch our punch is gonna cut out the open umbrella so just line it up you're gonna have a little white line around it pop whoops as things go flying no I love the thought Roz I didn't think of it I don't I honestly didn't think about it at all <laughs> I love the idea <laughs> and then our handle see because I had lined it up kind of based on where I would punch I'm gonna kind of waste some paper but it'll be well worth the hassle not having the hassle I should say this is our oh I dropped it there's our and, oh my goodness there we go and then unfortunately for our boots we don't have a punch we don't have a punch we don't have a die so guess what we're fussy cutting but this is a really quick and easy image not too many uh, curves you just kind of cut straight and then wrap up a little bit this is probably the worst part right here if you want to be fussy and kind of go in there but you don't have to the key to fussy cutting I always say is going slow take your time and leave just like our punch left a white line around it I do the same thing when I fussy cut it's just kind of forgiving it means if you accidentally cut too far in you're not snipping something important um, and if you go too far out it doesn't look weird never waste <laughs> I guess I could use that a white umbrella maybe <laughs> No, <laughs> no such thing as quick and easy fussy cutting. I don't mind it. You just gotta take your time. Slow is the word. Okay, there. See, that was fast, Amy. That was painless. <laughs> okay, so let's um, let's put this together. Oh, I didn't grab dimension dimensionals. Hold on. I forgot to grab dimensionals. Okay. Um, I think I used the regular sized. Oh no, you both, huh? Neither of you like it. So let me get a feel for if I have to add more raindrops. Now's the time to do it before I put these guys on and then I won't be able to. Ah, slide in that would like go there and that would like go like there. I think that's enough. Or do you like the full coverage? I kind of like it a little less. Um, I'm gonna go less. We know Amy does not like fussy cutting. I know she just doesn't. I try to convince her, but she's not, <laughs> she's not just not a fan. Okay. So Stampin' Dimensionals on my umbrella and on my boots, because when you can use dimensionals, it's just like one of those things. There's no question about it. 
peel the umbrella. I'll do the handle in a second. Actually, hold on, I have to get an idea where this is going. Okay, so like there. Actually, I need that back. So that's gonna go like that. And then, I never learned that skill in kindergarten. <laughs> less is more, okay, good, Roz, I'm glad you like that. I kinda like it less too. boots there and then I forgot to gla grab glue this unfortunately the handle is so so skinny um unless you really cut your dimensional super super skinny um you have to use liquid glue that's fine so there we go with that okay that's cute right oh I really like it so adorable Okay, so let's, because <laughs> I'm doing things a little differently. Let's do the sentiment. I'm not going to, I'm not sure it's going to work. That's, that's where I went <gasps> before. I'm like, oh my goodness, I didn't leave room for the sentiment with my switch of ideas. Okay. So if you have a photopolymer stamp set, they are like maneuverable. Is that a word? They are maneuverable this I don't, know, I don't know if that's a word they are you can like position them <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say maybe this corner because that one's a a little bigger meaning like you can bend them bendable there we go that was a much easier way and less complicated way of saying it um so I can make it fit my circle so all I do when I want to do this is I kind of put one end of the photopolymer down and I hold it with my finger and then I kind of push it slash fold it until it curves okay and then i just want to get a feel will that fit that will fit okay and i'm stamping this in poppy parade ink how about putting the sentiment under the artwork with the umbrella oh here oh i guess i could do that that was smart <laughs> that was smart karen hold on let's see do we like that you guys are just full of ideas tonight. My goodness. Where were you the other day when I was brainstorming all this? I kind of like it. Yes, we're going to do that. Sold. Brilliant idea, Karen. I just want to make sure it curves right, though. So I'll just kind of play with it a little bit. Will that work? There. Hold on. I got to fix this. It's bothering me. There we go. There was like a, I guess it's still kind of like that, a bubble there. Okay, we're going with it. I was going to test it, make sure it stays on, and we're good. There we go, okay. Here we go. Are you nervous? I'm a little nervous. It's going to be fine. Beautiful. I like that, Karen. What a great idea. Thank you. If that's what you meant. If that's not what you meant, then thank you for inspiring the good idea. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, okay, so let's get start putting it all together. I am um, using some of the Poppy Parade ribbon. Oh, what's it? Textured weave ribbon. Okay, and I'm gonna have it go around this, but I'm not. My my bow isn't attached. Isn't um, let's see here. Isn't made of this. Oh gosh, that's not how I want to say it. <laughs> um, hold on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is cut my ribbon because you know how much I stress over making bows. They just, they stress me out. And so I like to cheat anytime I can. Um, is that where I wanted the ribbon? I hope that's where I wanted the ribbon because I just committed to put a thing there. Yeah, that's fine, right? In the middle. Hold on. Actually, I may have had to put that lower. Oh, well, it's that's where the bow is going. That's what I do when I forget to leave space for the sentiment. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, so when I make a bow and it's not twine. Now, if it's twine, I do just go ahead and make the bow. But if it's out of like the ribbon, I kind of do this wrap around. And then I make a fork bow, which I've done before. You know, you've seen me do it. So I wrap it around. Oops. Your ribbon's in the back of your fork. And then you come over the original, the first one. And then in the middle and then pull, I slide it down because it's a little wider down here, 
and then this guy goes up the middle a fork bow and then snip oh my goodness my kids are fighting upstairs I can hear them <laughs> oh boy I hope you can't hear them on camera <laughs> and then you tie a knot okay and then pull tight and then when it slides off da -da! I've done this a lot. You're probably like, I know, we know how to make a fork bow, move on. Um, and then I trim my tails. You know, I if you know me, I like big, big bow tails, but they do have to match. So that one kind of goes that way and the other one was going the other way. So we have to make them somewhat even. Okay, I love this ribbon. I love, love, love it. I'm so glad I came back can't oh you can't hear them okay good <laughs> they know i'm live and they're like i tell them like don't walk don't make noise but you know you know how that goes <laughs> in one ear out the other okay so again i'm going to use more dimensionals because when you can you should always every opportunity you should use a dimensional and i also find when i'm wrapping around ribbon it kind of creates this added um bit here um so sometimes if i just use snail or something it doesn't lay flat now the great thing about using gingham paper is that when you're looking to i think i'm gonna go dead try and go um center is that you can use the lines to gauge you uh adhering it down straight <laughs> it's like you are given a grid paper <laughs> you can't mess it up and because I want to, of course, I'm going to use uh, more dimensionals. <laughs> I can't help myself. Let's see here. So it's going to go like that. I just want to go around the ribbon. I don't want to, if I put it in the middle where the ribbon is, then it's not going to be even as well. Oh, thanks, Roz. Thank you so much. Okay, pull these off. Now... I just realized that my boots, are they, aren't exactly straight. Hold on, let me see. Are my boots not straight? I guess they're straight enough. It's kind of hard. I'm going to go right over. You know what's throwing me off? It's because the umbrella is like kind of off center. So everything kind of looks off. And then this is like <laughs> curved. Okay. So there's that, and then we're gonna take our ribbon, and then you're gonna need liquid glue again, at least this is what I do, and I've done it before, so. But let me see where I wanna put it. I guess it's gonna kinda of have to hang off. Yeah, I wanted it more down here. Oh well, it's gonna to have to hang off. I put liquid glue down, I like load it up, put a whole glob, and then what I do is, I need a block, all my blocks are being used. I put my ribbon down. Oops. Make sure it's pretty, because once it's dry, it's not moving. I put that down and then I put a block over it. And I walk away. <laughs> I walk away and then when I come back, it's like this. It's glued on there, it's not going, it's set. So, okay, so how about that? One, two, three kind of versions of this card. <laughs> I guess I really like it. Um, you'll have to let me know um, if you like this one, like with the full panel, or this one kind of chopped up. Um, they're different. I, I think they're fun because they're all the same. I mean, they're all similar, but they're different at the same time. So I think that's really fun. So if you've been watching and you have yet to leave a comment, um, quickly do so. Because as soon as we're done here, I'm going to draw a name for, to see who wins tonight's card. And you can let me know which one you'd like. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me tonight. I will see you again um, next week. Have a great rest of your evening. Bye-bye.